Okay, good morning everyone. I'm very glad to be here at the BR Cake meeting and uh, seeing you all, having the opportunity to talk to you and uh, also having the opportunity to launch the book that you have seen, I think, in two days. And this book, uh, Diana has organized this book with me and it was a pleasure to do that. And I want to thank all the authors. And uh, if you want to buy it, we are going to launch it in two days. Or you can buy by the editora da Universidade Federal de Alagoas. Well, the propaganda was not made out of nothing because the book has to do with my talk. And uh, I would like to talk about the role of culture in English teaching and learning as an additional language in Brazil. As Roberto has said, it's very ambitious to talk about teaching English as an additional language and culture in Brazil, because it's the dimension of the country and different works that we see here. But I'll try to talk about my experience in the, the, our local experience at the Federal University of Alagoas. So, um, following Andrea's uh, idea, I'll start talking about my experience in learning, teaching, and developing research in culture and language. Then I'll talk a little bit about Brazilian education documents and how they deal with the, the role of culture. Some about recent practice in Alagoas, some obstacles that we have uh, been through, and some future possibilities. Well, starting with my experience, English learning experience. I've decided to learn English because I wanted to get to know the culture of the other. And this was something that was basic for me since I was a child. I wanted to know the opinion, the culture, the, what other people think about the world. And uh, this was not, of course, something conscious, uh, defined. I couldn't say that it was culture and I couldn't say that I would think critically about things, but it was something in my mind. And I was living in Brasilia during, during the dictatorship. It was very interesting during that time. And uh, con uh, contrary to what you have said, everything that I saw in Brasilia, it seemed normal to me the military, people in the streets, people uh, being uh, in prison, and uh, the Medici president, and we with the flags of Brazil. I didn't realize how awful the situation was. But afterwards, of course, then I got to know really how, what was happening in our country. After that, too, I realized that when I was learning English, I wanted something related to the Movimento Antropofágico de Osvaldo de Andrade, which is a little bit of cannibal thinking. Like, I wanted to uh, uh, eat the culture of the other, digest it, and transform it in something else. And then I have here a saying of Oswald, Tupi, which is the indigenous language, the general one, or not Tupi. And then we, we have several things that we could discuss about it. And uh, he is also quoting Shakespeare, to be or not to be, and the questions of several identities. Uh, when I started uh, working at university, I wrote my first article about cultural awareness with a friend called Eugene Cavalcante, and we wrote the article to the forum journal called Developing Cultural Awareness in EFL Classrooms. At that time, I think I won't have time to read everything, <coughs> but at that time, I still saw culture as uh, something static. 
the culture of the native speaker, the target language, the target culture. But we saw that it was different from what we have been teaching during that time. We were teaching only grammar, skills, or the older legal method, repeating, doing drills, but no culture was included. And we wanted more than that. So uh, we tried to, uh, I'll read just the second paragraph, regardless of different points of view, culture has taken an important place in language teaching and learning studies. It has been widely recognized that culture and language are interrelated and that, and that language is used as the main medium through which culture is expressed. In our opinion, in foreign language classrooms, pure information is useful but does not necessarily lead us to insight, whereas the development of people's cultural awareness leads us to more critical thinking as citizens with political and social understanding of our own and other communities. But how can we teach culture to Brazilian foreign language teenage students who usually do not have close contact with native speakers of English and have little opportunity to discover how these speakers think, feel, and interact with others in their own peer group? <coughs> how can we stimulate their curiosity about the target culture when sometimes they do not even have sufficient time to learn the formal properties of the language? Perhaps one of the ways of doing so is by exploring culture-based activities. So you see that at that time, in 1996, we were still talking about target language, native speaker, and uh, the culture of uh, English-speaking <coughs> countries. Then we proposed some, uh, in this article, we proposed some <coughs> cultural topics based on teaching and learning language and culture by Barry and Morgan. Is that you, Morgan? No. no. And colleagues and other book called Cultural Awareness by Tomalin and Stempleski. And we got several different topics, as you can see, social identity, social interaction at different levels of familiarity, belief and behavior, social political institutions, national history and geography, media, arts, language variation. And we developed some activities to use in classroom with our students. It did well, but it was all related to English culture, American culture, sometimes Australian, Jamaican, but always thinking about English-speaking country, not about world Englishes, not about transculturalism, not about transnationalism, nothing like that. In 2005, there was a wave in Brazil of interest in studying culture. And uh, there was a book called Advanced Research in English Series, A Interculturalidade no Ensino de Inglês. Uh, and uh, we have several articles in this book, including Andrea's article. I don't know, I think there is Lynn's article too. And uh, it was uh, something that motivated me more to study much more about culture and language in English language teaching. Because while I was studying culture, I received some feedback from my friends in linguistics and in the, in the letters course that I wasn't doing what I was supposed to do. I wasn't working with language, I wasn't working with uh, the proper uh, content of the language course and I should be in the cultural studies department, the sociology department, the pedagogy department, and not there. It was very difficult during that time. But I kept on working on it. Finally, sorry, it's not very, a very good image. In 2006, we had the opportunity to organize a book called Language, Culture, and Teaching. And uh, this book, it was my first attempt to uh, look at culture in a transnational way. And uh, we collected uh, uh, several articles from uh, different researchers in Brazil. <coughs> and uh, they wrote about teaching a language as a foreign language and we have articles uh, about teaching Chinese, teaching French, teaching English, 
and uh, also culture in the organization institutions in Brazil. In this uh, book, we were very much motivated and guided by the thought of Kremsch, which I had been reading a lot at the time. And she made the preface of the book. And here she summarizes what we've been, what we have put in, in the book. So she said, we have come a long way from the times when culture was considered an expendable add-on to the teaching of foreign languages. Culture is now seen as an integral part of the way we think and talk about foreign language education. Culture is no longer the canonical high culture of educated elite, nor it is the exotic foods, fairs, and folklore of an orientalized other, nor it is the way of life of an authentic native speaker. Culture today is a complex historical and symbolic reality that calls for a post-structuralist view of the language culture relation, uh, sorry, that's it, language culture relation as historicity, identity, and ideology. Teaching language and culture is a form of cultural politics and a reflection of language as symbolic power. These essays draw on an impressive range of disciplines, applied linguistics, literary and cultural studies, sociology, anthropology, language education, organization management. So we were trying to do some transdisciplinary approach in this book. They stress the importance of teaching language as relational rights. By engaging their students with the other, Teachers should constantly relativize their and their students' own way of seeing and being in the world and compare and contrast it with the way others see and experience it. But this should not end here. Teaching as a reflexive practice should lead students to reflect on the historical and poli political conditions that have made their culture and the culture of others what it is today. It should also lead teachers to reflect on their own pedagogical practice in all its methodological, institutional, and political aspects. Finally, teaching as a dialogical practice should help construct the decentered third place that people occupy when they experience life in more than one language. <coughs> At that time, I started thinking about the construction of an entry space in uh, teaching and learning language and culture in a foreign language. And Kramsch in Applied Linguistic was one of the first uh, researchers that talked about that. In the book, we have also, in this book, we have also a chapter written by Ian and Rosalind and they talk about the enter space too. They give some uh, thoughts about it. Uh, in this book, I have a chapter, the 2006 book, Language, uh, Culture, and Teaching, in which I try to uh, talk about some concepts of culture in approaches and compare to approaches and methods in foreign language teaching. So I see some traditional and well-known approaches and methods and compare how they see and deal with culture uh, in their, their uh, principles. Uh, I won't have time to show them here, but it was very interesting to see uh, the importance of culture in each one of these approaches. Of course, that uh, in this article, we only see up to the communicative approach, and then we talk about some transformative approaches, but we haven't seen anything yet about new learning and uh, multi-literacies and new literacies. Then, in 2009, I uh, write a project after I have uh, attended the national project meeting that Valkyria and Limario uh, organized, and uh, I was invited by Vanderlei and the group, I wrote uh, a project, 
entitled Globalization, Culture and the New Literacies Research in the Teaching of English as a Foreign Language. And now I, I focus on the aspect of transculturalism and enter space and uh, world Englishes and how we can cope culture and the English teaching in classroom. And this was also a project that I gave um, to Diana as my postdoctoral uh, intent or thoughts that I would like to develop there. Oh, only five. <laughs> And uh, about some Brazilian documents, I, we thought that it was important also to go through Brazilian education documents to see how they treat cultures. And uh, we wrote an article with Selma Silva Bezerra about the Parâmetros Curriculares Nacionais uh, de Ensino Fundamental, basic teaching. And uh, we, we realized that it was only uh, directed to critical thinking, but in terms of uh, basic critical thinking, how to read, interpret, understand the text per se, but not how to uh, <coughs> try to develop meaning making. Then we take, took a look, a look at Orientações Curriculares para o Ensino Médio, which was written in 2006 by uh, Valkyria and uh, Lin Mario, and it's quite related to the national project and has uh, the influence of the new literacies and multiliteracies <coughs> approach. So, culture is seen as we have discussed it here. And I also have the opportunity to work at the Plano Nacional do Livro Didático, which was uh, introduced in foreign language evaluation in 2009. And they are pretty uh, concerned about the place of culture in the <coughs> didactic material that we give to the public schools. As some local uh, context now. Here is Brazil, the map of Brazil, and as you can see in orange, there is the state of Alagoas in the northeast of Brazil, a very small state, and we have our university there, there is where we live and work. The faculty of Alagoas studies FALI, which belongs to the Federal University of Alagoas, exists, including the teaching of English and French, since 1961, and it is mostly related to teachers' formation. Now we have also German and uh, sign language and Spanish. At Fali, English classes are mainly planned based on a semi-diversity semi policy way of teaching English, or in Cranish's words, in a way that both teacher and students can translate, transpose, and critically reflect on social, cultural, and historical meanings conveyed by the grammar and lexicon. Teachers are challenged to teach English language in a social, cultural perspective. This is not an easy task. There are crosstalks, miscomprehensions, but a lot of reflection and critical interest in the classes. The goal is to get our future English teachers to develop translingual and transcultural competence and performance, that is, make them recognize the meanings they construct while dealing with their own language cultures of others. Some obstacles that we have found. Besides all the, the obstacles that we have of being uh, from a small state, very poor, lots of illiterate people, uh, teachers that are not motivated, they don't have the technique, they don't have uh, time to prepare the classes and so and so and so that we already know. We have seen that the exam that uh, the government applied to the students that have finished the secondary school and want to enter university that we call ENEM, Exame Nacional do Ensino Médio, they, uh, their questions 
the, the items that they make in English language, they don't include critical thinking. When we have to elaborate the items, I had the chance to participate that, in that, Paulo too, we are uh, suggested, suggested not to include any opinion, to ask them any critical opinion. We cannot do that. We have only to ask them to interpret the text. So, although the documents, they value culture, they value critical thinking, they value meaning making, when they evaluate their students, nothing is done. We do not that, we don't do that, we cannot do that. So here is an example of a question, uh, a, a quote of Jimi Hendrix, when the power of love overcomes the love of power, the world will know peace and then they associate meanings of the word, the word, the words, that's it. Another example, a poem. See how lovely it is, how nice it is to, to deal with critical thinking and meaning making. But here in the question, we cannot do that. We just have to ask, what kind of feeling does this poem uh, translate? Courage, shame, comprehension, superiority, resignation, and that's it. So we are restrict. Although we try to do something more when they are examined, all the work that we have done is cut. Uh, what we have been doing in Alagoas, we have been trying to use the educational uh, new literacies, multiliteracies approach in our supervised internship, what we call estágio supervisionado, in our English classes, in the National Formation Project for English Teachers of Public Schools, which is a, a, a MEC, the Ministry of Education uh, program, and is coordinated by Sergio Ifa. We try to develop research in new literacies and identities by Paulo Sergio, Paulo Stella, sorry. <laughs> and uh, we try to keep do mobilizing knowledge between Brazil and Canada with transnational and transcultural literacies. What I would like to, to, to say is that uh, it's a challenge to work in this way in Alagoas, but I think it's also very uh, grateful and very nice to work in this way. And the future possibilities is to keep in mobilizing knowledge. It's something that I have learned. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here working and uh, sharing knowledge with each other. And during my uh, academic uh, experience, I have shared knowledge with people from other disciplines and it was very interesting. Especially with one person who was part of our team in the BRK, I have to say that, Marcelo Milano, some of you have met him. He died one year and a half ago. We have an article written by him here and he was from the administration part. And I've learned with him a lot from uh, Brazilian thought, uh, reading Celso Furtado and Milton Ramos. This was very important for me, the knowledge that we have exchanged. And also with Eugene Cavalcante, which is the vice president of Abaprui, Abrapui now, she works with literature, I don't. And she has uh, talked to me a lot about feminist theory. And uh, I, I hope next, my next talk, next Friday, I can talk a little bit about frontiers and use literature and uh, gender, talk about gender. So I think that's what I wanted to say, it's not much. Just to end, I want to repeat Diana's uh, words in the discussion before, that uh, uh, the challenge that we see is that we need an agenda, and uh, we need to open people, I'm quoting, 
open people to understand their own potential without being coercive. And I think it's very difficult because I, I find myself a biased person with the new literacies and multiliteracies approach. And uh, to try to raise autonomy, beauty, envisionment, and critical thinking with my peers and students. And that's it. Thank you very much.